when I heard the album, mm -hmm. I wanted you to be in the next room so I could run in and talk to you about it immediately mm -hmm. because I was so happy and I was so happy for you. Okay. Why? Be because it was unexpected. Mm -hmm. It was a glorious fusion of uh, sounds I hadn't heard before. Mm -hmm. What you've done on the album, which was also unexpected, was the vulnerability that mm -hmm. you show in it, mm -hmm. which is breathtaking. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like, uh, almost like you've beat people to the punch. And that to me is what artistry is, is that you anticipate for yourself, not for the outside looking in, you anticipate for yourself what, where the need is to go. But it was political and not angry, but joyous. Mm -hmm. That's very hard to do. Yeah, that was, that was one of my intentions, to vent my rage, but not in a, a way that was going to put people off, but to, to, to turn that rage into something joyful. And so I wanted to ask about the um, Madam mm -hmm. X and the notion of being a muse, because you are a muse to yourself. Yes, exactly. I'm glad that you've, you caught that, because not a lot of people get that. No, but it's a very unusual relationship. I mean, I've, I've relied on muses all my life to keep going, whether that's Anne Sexton, the poet, or Martha Graham, the dancer, choreographer, or Frida Kahlo, the painter. I'm, I've relied on muses to keep going and to inspire me. And after over 30 years of doing what I do, I realize I've become my own muse. You're right. So, still channeling all of these incredible women and men, because men are also inspiring to me. Um, like James Baldwin, he's one of my great heroes. Um, and I consider all of them to be freedom fighters and feminists and um, people who chose the path less traveled by. But a lot of my peers no longer are alive. And in a way, I'm, go I'm now going into uncharted territory. So I have to be my own muse. But life is sort of uncharted territory, isn't it? It certainly is. It is. If you are vigilant, paying attention, curious, mm. um, then you're always going to find yourself in an unfamiliar place. But a lot of people are complacent and they don't want to move out of the familiar place. And that's sure. when life ends, really. But I don't see the point of living if you don't keep no. pushing yourself into unfamiliar territory. In your um, family life in mm -hmm. Lisbon, yeah. I'm struck by how part of the calling, because you're also a mother to mm -hmm. six, mm -hmm. which is phenomenal. I'm a mother to four, and I can barely even conceive that for myself. <laughs> You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you're like, how did this happen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yes. Yes. You know, the, and the choice I gather that you made to live in Portugal was for David, your mm -hmm. son, and his love of what we call soccer. And you, yeah. you guys call football. football. No, you call it football. We call it soccer. Oh, we call it soccer. No, uh, the Poms call it football. Is that English? Yeah, we call it soccer. It must yeah. be. Yeah. Oh, we're united. Exactly. <laughs> but um, it's interesting that the choice that you made as a mother, an unselfish choice to mm -hmm. uproot yourself and take the family and live there. Um, yeah, it was, yes. Was, it was hard. It was really hard. But led to this. Yep. So it's like the reward is in the sacrifice. Yes. The antidote is always in the poison. But the, the living proof of it sometimes is, I think, too much sacrifice leads to martyrdom. Mm -hmm. Not enough sacrifice leads to a self-indulgence that you seem to deprive both to yourself death. of. <laughs> yeah, they both lead to death. Correct, yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. Like too much sitting now leads to death. Yeah. Too much dancing doesn't lead to death. Definitely not. I never heard of anyone die from dancing. But speaking of dancing, mm -hmm. I saw your um, 
Sunday sessions, I think in your kitchen. Oh. With your, with Dave. <laughs> with my kids, with, yeah. yeah. We do yeah. a lot of that. It doesn't just happen on a Sunday, but we only see David on weekends right now because he's in Lisbon and I've been in, in London here working, so. And as a, um, I showed it to my um, husband, mm -hmm. thinking that he would appreciate the joy of the dancing, which he sort of did, and then he went, can you ask her how she gets her children to practice their music? Because oh, yeah. that's a great challenge. Yeah, uh, well, if they love it. Mercy loves playing piano, so I didn't have to twist her arm. Lola, on the other hand, I had to twist her arm, but she, she could play beautifully, but she saw it as a chore. Yes. So each child is different. Yes, yeah. but you never saw the discipline of your dance as a chore or the music as a chore? No, the discipline of dance, actually, I, I welcomed it and I, was, I drank it like it was water because I grew up in such a, you know, sort of banal place. I, I felt like growing up in the Midwest was a curse and I didn't, um, there wasn't a lot of art and creativity around me. Thank God for the Detroit Institute of Arts. Thank God for my oldest brother who turned me on to um, Charles Bukowski and jazz and, right. um, you know, like concepts and ideas that people that I went to school with, my peers were not interested in. So um, when I started dancing, I went, oh my God, there's, there's, there's hope for me. I, there's a path I can take out of here. And I had my mind set on New York and um, meeting Martha Graham and, and I did. Madam X, who X, coined. Who, yes, mm. who was the first person to call me Madam X. So um, dance was my way out in so many ways. And the discipline of having to do, I have class to go to. I have important things to do because I'm going somewhere. That was everything to me. So um, discipline is second nature and I, expect it of my children also. So they probably would say I'm too strict mm -hmm. and that I, yeah, and they, but we give, we have days off. Yes. Dancing days. Yes. Dancing yes. in the kitchen days. Yes. Or riding horses on the beach days. Beautiful. Yeah. And when, when you consider your life as a mother mm -hmm. and as a woman and as an icon or whatever the, the terminology is, mm -hmm. what's your o overriding sense of where you are now? Because on the album you mention loneliness and that... Betrayal. Betrayal. Mm -hmm. A very cute lyric that made me laugh where people say, I am insane, my only friend is in my brain. <laughs> yes. So cute. <laughs> yeah. Um, where do you feel now? Is the gestation and the birth of the album, does it, is it a release? Is it a new trajectory? I mean, in a way, it's, it's, a re it's a release or an expression of things that I've been thinking of and that have been stored up inside of me for years. And I finally found a good way to say it, sing it, play it, do it, yeah. And when you But go, I had to make that sacrifice for it to come to me. Correct. For the for the for the um for the mojo to come. Yes. <laughs> yes. But it's it's lovely that the reward is there. Mm -hmm. And it's lovely for everyone else who is curious to see what you do next because nobody has done what you do. Mm -hmm. Um so much so that when I was reading and I went into the wormhole with you mm -hmm. over the last sort of week and one thing leads to another to another and I stumbled across, I don't know how much about yourself you read. Do you tend to? Um, I usually don't get through most articles because I don't feel that journalists do enough homework um, or pay enough attention to real details or things that I actually said. So. I get through a lot of the interviews. I get like halfway and I just put Lose it down. interest. Yeah, because I don't want to get angry. Sure, sure. Because I think, well, why weren't you paying attention? Sure. Well, there's <laughs> one very cute thing I found, which mm -hmm. is um, 60, it's like a list, one of those sort of buzzfeedy sort of lists. Mm -hmm. And it's 60 ways in which Madonna changed the culture. Oh, I saw that, Have yeah. You seen that? That was cool. Isn't it cool? Yeah. However, 
just when I was reading through it, yeah. I got to number 22 and I was so exhausted, I needed a nap. <laughs> And I, I had just read about it. That's funny. Yeah, that came out of my birthday. I remember. And you have done it. Yeah. And I thank you for doing it. And I thank you for continuing to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, for articulating what only you can articulate. My pleasure. And for being fun. <laughs> and for having an eye patch. <laughs> you can have one too. It's so cute. Yeah. It's so cute and the intensity of the gaze, mm -hmm. which is very focused if you wear an eye patch. Yep, I got one eye and I'm looking at you through both of them. What do you see, Madonna? What do you see? I see a lady in purple overalls. I'm not trolling you, they're not hydrangeas. No, I know. Those, <laughs> those look like orchids or irises. Or maybe even violets or something. Maybe. You know your flowers. You no, know, I, like, I don't like hydrangeas. No, I heard, mm -hmm. I heard. Yeah. But. I like you very much. The world likes you very much. And I just wanted to say in a culture where sometimes we think that this is everything, mm -hmm. that is not the truth of the situation. No, we, but we know that. But yeah, we know that mm -hmm. because uh, what survives humans. is, what, and what survives is art. Yeah. Art always survives.